Okay, we're going to carry on with this problem, but we need a bit more space for it. So um, we showed already this in uh, the previous part. Now, for a fixed value of r, that's important. r being a fixed value is not going to change. It's not going to vary. It behaves like any number. The value of t is the thing that varies as the value of theta varies. So you can see the diagram from the previous slide. We are going to be asked to show that t takes its maximum value when theta satisfies this equation. We're given, given the answer again, we're going to work from this answer. So t equals this thing. So I'm going to change it a little bit and go r squared over 2 sine theta. You know that r squared over 2 just behaves as 1 half would, for example, because r is going to be fixed. And r squared over 2 sine 2 theta. Now, since I'm looking for a maximum value, therefore I'm need to, going to need to differentiate dt with respect to theta, the things which vary. This behaves like a constant. The sine of theta has derivative cosine theta, so the constant stays cosine theta. That's nice because we want cos theta. Now the constant say stays, and we have the chain rule. 2 theta is inside of sine, so you have the cosine of 2 theta times 2. So in this case, we can now see, to simplify, the 2's cancel out. But we have a cos 2 theta, and we need a cos squared. So we know from the double angle identity in the formula booklet that cosine 2 theta has three different substitutions which are necessary available. We want the one 2 cos squared minus 1 because we need cos squared. There's no sine squared. It's only in terms of coses. The other ones for the double angle have sines included in them. So this gives us a step closer to what we're trying to show. So dt d theta is equal to r squared over 2 cos theta plus r squared. Now I'm going to replace this with 2 cosine squared subtract 1. Now the maximum value is going to be when the derivative is 0, so let's go ahead and put that together now. And in our next line, I'm going to take this, expand here, and then um, actually why don't we at the same, no, no, let's just do that. r squared over 2 cosine of theta plus 2r squared cos squared theta minus r squared is equal to 0. Now I'm going to take this equation and I'm going to multiply both sides. You notice our result does not have an r in it. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 1 over r squared so that the r squareds will cancel. And you notice also here there are no fractions, so I'm going to multiply everything by 2, which will alleviate this 2 here. So the r squareds will cancel everywhere. Let's clean this up. And we are left with cosine theta because 2 over 2 times the 1 half will just leave cos theta, plus 2 times the 2 is 4. The r squared is cancelled, and you have cos squared theta, minus r squared over r squared is 1, equals 0. Now to rearrange, 4 cos squared, and brilliant, we are exactly where we wanted to be. So we have shown what we wanted. Okay, So the steps were to recognize that r squared over 2 is, behaves like any constant, to use the chain rule, then to use the double angle identity for cosine to get closer to what we're trying to show, and then some quick algebraic manipulation to get where we, um, uh, where we want to go.